Corps TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter joins us live now from Waverly, Ohio. I think that I got the family tree correct. I may have misstated one of those, but Chanley, uh, if you would, let's focus on Luke Roden because I understand you interviewed him right after he left the courthouse after he finished testifying. Tell us about that. Yeah, Ashley, how difficult it was for him. He told me it was nerve wracking to be up there on the stand and really affecting his mental state to relive what he had to go through six years ago, which is what he testified to in front of the jury on the witness stand earlier. He walked them through April 22nd, 2016, where he met a group of people at a church because he heard of the murders uh, of his family, Roden family, and he went to his father's house who was not answering the phone, but he did didn't expect to find him deceased. So he walks the jury through the discovery of his father's dead body. Let's take a listen. I don't believe I stepped up in his bedroom. I may have stepped on the step right there, maybe. Okay. No, I, no, I don't believe I stepped in his bedroom. Okay. I was able to see his leg and the top of his head and the blanket uh, it was actually placed, looked like it had been placed on him. Okay. Were you able to see his face at that time at all? No, I could just see his forehead and his hair. Okay. So you did not see any injuries or the blood that Donald saw? Correct. Okay. And you said that you could see his leg. Um, was there anything else on the bed that you saw by near his leg? I seen probably, I don't know how much, but like a few ones and fives and stuff like that, some money, paper money. Okay. And uh, his pants was laying there beside it. Of course, he said that was uh, just horrifying. Uh, the worst nightmares, what he told me, uh, to find the body of his father. He went on to identify key crime scene photos for the prosecution on his testimony. And on Cross, we continue to hear those same consistent themes from the defense, really inquiring about the marijuana growth operation the Rodins had at, at uh, Kenneth's property, at Chris uh, Rodin's property. and. Uh, this witness, Luke Roden, was up front. He said that he helped his father in this marijuana business. Let's take a listen to the part of that cross-examination. So we've established that your father was engaged in trafficking of marijuana. Right? Yes. At some point, though, is it your understanding that he was going to get out no longer? Did he? Yes. Right. He actually talked to me about uh, him uh, Given the uh, that land and everything to Gary, so he's getting ready to leave. And, and was Gary to pick up the operation? And was it was supposed to yes. Okay. The defense attorney asked about uh, the people involved in this marijuana operation, the selling of it, and if people owed his father Kenneth money. Well, in my interview with Luke, right after he left the witness stand, I asked did when this originally happened, did you think someone responsible may have been involved in this drug operation? He said no. He had he never once thought it was anyone involved in the drug operation he and his father were into that eventually what he thought, uh, based on something his father told him, that it was the Wagners, which I thought was very interesting, actually. What do you miss most, most about your uh, dad, Kenneth? Uh, his voice getting us, you know, go and see him for a little bit before he goes, you know, off doing his own thing. Uh, just being around him. But, I mean, it's not like I can pick up the phone and call him again. Yeah. It sounds like you guys were really close. We was. Uh, worked together and, um, you have, a. Uh, you siblings how, how's your family coping I know it's been six years but it's kind of something you never get over right we was doing quite a bit better and everything I think a lot of the stuff happening now is bringing up the past and stuff starting to backslide on us and yeah so oh, for sure um, in in the gallery any of your members of the, I know your grandmother's there uh, right. Geneva right is that how you say your name yeah. um, who else is in the gallery uh, um, my sister Tashana. My Uncle Tony, my Uncle Brady, 
my uh, Uncle Dave, uh, my my uh, I got a few aunts in there, and that's really about it. Yeah. You were taken in, and, and you were really up front with the authorities. Like, yes, uh, we had we grew marijuana. We did. The, what were your initial thoughts when this happened? Who could have been responsible? Honestly, I didn't really know right offhand. You know, then later on down the road, I had a feeling that it may have been the Wagners, just because of what he had told me in the past. You know. Oh. What did he tell you in the past? I honestly don't know if I'm able to say that, so... Sure, sure, sure. Uh, but something he said, your dad said to you was... Correct. Made you think the Wagners may have had something to do with it. Correct. Got it, got it. Um, I know you told the jury about uh, Billy Wagner, what he said right. to you and your dad and Chris that... Uh, repeat that part for me, because that I wasn't in there earlier in the courtroom. That if uh, if he ever had a mess with him, that he'd have to shoot him. And that was about several years ago. Yes. Before the murder. Yeah, uh, it's it's been quite a few years before all okay. all this happened. But they had that kind of reputation where. Right. They would do that. Right. Um, but did you think maybe someone with the drug operation or someone like I think the defense brought someone who owed your dad? Did you ever think maybe someone Honestly, involved with that? In drugs, no. I didn't think it was ever that. I think it was ever more or less uh, family dispute. Yeah. Uh, that's what I thought was all over. I went on to ask uh, Luke about how you know, his other cousins, the babies that were found at the crime scene alive, he said they're still, they're doing well, they're thriving, they're with other family members. He also talked about the moment when he was on the witness stand where he had to identify George Wagner in the courtroom. He said he didn't want to look directly at George Wagner, but he did, he had to do it. He pointed him out in the courtroom. He says that he hopes the Wagners get what's coming to them. But I asked about the death penalty, Ashley, and he said that he does not agree with the death penalty as a punishment for the mass murder. He hopes that they spend the rest of their life behind bars. He thinks that's a harsher penalty, that they have to wake up and think about what they did every day for the rest of their lives. What a brave man. He had my heart when he was testifying, if I'm completely transparent. And then really breaking news that he finishes he leaves the courthouse and he is open with you, Chanley, and talking with you and reliving this again and telling details and that he believes, yes, this was a family feud, no drug cartel, no drug involvement, family feud, and this is who killed his father. He just had to go through the process of identifying again. Did he indicate to you at all how this has affected what he does next, the fact that this trial is here, Chanley, and now this piece of it, speaking out in open court, did he did he indicate, is he gonna come back to court or if he's gonna go home to the family, if they're just waiting to see what happens, or did he give you any sense of any of that? He certainly did, Ashley. He said, first of all, there's no way to ever heal from what happened to his family six years ago. He said they're still in the process of just trying to figure out how to live every day. I asked if he was going to go back in the courtroom now that he's clear from his subpoena. He said he can't today. He needs a moment uh, to go back home and he may be back in the future. As far as his extended family inside the courtroom, he has his, of course, grandmother there, as well as many aunts and uncles that are there supporting the Roden victims here. He said that, uh, they're here to represent the family. He wanted to testify on camera for his family and represent them. Uh, is, he said it's just unbelievable to imagine, especially what his grandmother has gone through, losing her children and grandchildren, and they're really just rallying around each other right now to try to, to move on um, from this senseless tragedy. You know, and one of uh, another guest legal analyst was talking about matriarch and the fact that, yes, a mother and father were killed in this family of eight, but the matriarch, the grandmother that you just referenced, lives on in, in this family of eight wiped out. Chanley Painter, always great to have you on, but thank you so much for joining us live in Ohio.